So from having those early businesses, page your business, dry cleaners, et cetera, what did that teach you about like filmmaking? So the thing is, because uh, of, as filmmakers, right, a lot of us want to be artists. And a lot of us don't want to deal with the business aspect, which is cool if you don't, but you have to, right? Uh, if you depend on other people to take care of the business aspect, you will always be broke. So we have to understand business. We have to understand marketing because we have to apply those things, not just be, just be artists. We have to apply those things. So if you, if you look at the, some of the most successful uh, uh, filmmakers from Tyler Perry to George Lucas uh, to uh, Steven Spielberg, they're not only great filmmakers, but they're also a great businessman. So as a businessman, I took those same, that same energy, those, those, those same laws, and I just transferred those laws and that energy and that, um, that hustle to the film business. So I knew when I went out to make, even again, I'm gonna just use my first film as an example. Even the first film that I made, I knew I shot, everything was shot in wide shot, but I was like, I didn't give up. I didn't say, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to put it out. I didn't say that I'm not, I don't want it uh, to edit it. I was like, go ahead, just put it together. So we did st still put it together. And now what I did was, I just like I went out with the briefcase, with the pages, I got copies of the DVDs made, and I went out and hustled those DVDs. It was going door to door. It was going, um, hitting the streets of Chicago. It was going to different clubs and we just used that same energy and that's those same laws and transfer those over to the movie business, which allowed me to continue to make films for the last 15 years. It's because of that drive, that hustle and understanding the business aspect of, of, of filmmaking. So can you take me through a day of like selling DVDs, what that was like? Oh yes, yeah. so what I would do is I would go for first. I would I would head. A, I always would get like a thousand copies made, and I would say, okay, I I knew that I I had to do e events. So what I would do is I would do an event, and I would do like a um, a poetry event, right? And I would surround the poetry event and say, okay, twenty five dollars for the poetry event. So I would hire poets. I would have like food, and but a DVD would come in with that as well. So I wrapped everything around the selling of this of my movies. And then what I would do is I would get up in the morning, like if I, when I hit the streets, I get up in the morning, you know, get dressed and put my DVDs, a box of DVDs in the car. And I would just go on like a busy street, like say for instance, 87th and Ashland, which is like a really, really major busy street. And I would stand up in front, in, in, in the middle of the street with the DVDs as cars driving past and sell the DVDs. You know, and people would stop and they were like, okay, whose movie is this? This is my movie. Uh, my name is Mark Harris. I would like, you know, want, want to know if you would like, a, you know, to uh, buy my DVD. And a lot of times, not a lot of times, most times people were like, oh, okay. They want, they want to support you. Even if they don't watch the film, they want to support you because they see that you're out here. You're out here making it happen. You know, so it's, it, today it's a lot easier because so much, because we're streaming. You can put your film on YouTube and you don't have to, <laughs> you can, and, and people will watch it. But with me, it was like, I went out, hit the streets. I went door to door. When I went door to door, people will come and say, uh, what, what are you doing? My, hey, my name is Mark Harris. I'm a filmmaker from Chicago. Uh, I would like, you know, just know, like for you to know if you want to buy my DVD. What is it about? I would tell them the storyline and it was like, okay. Some people say no, but some people say yeah. But every day I would go back. I would go back, I would hit different blocks up. You know, even if they say you no, know, you go back maybe a week later. You know, and, you know and most times, most times people were bad. Cause you know, this, this person is serious. You just can't take no for an answer at all. <laughs> and uh, that's how, that was our day to day. Just going out, hitting the, the, uh, the streets, going door to door. Uh, going to the clubs and just selling your DVDs, selling my DVDs. Yeah. Would you say you're an extrovert? No, I'm, I'm more of an introvert. Okay. Yeah. Because that takes a real like confidence or, you know, special kind of person to be able to go and be like this self driver and knock on people's doors. I mean, that's scary. Yeah, it is. But it's, it's interesting because like when I'm like around a lot of people, and I'm and if I'm not, this is what my wife says a lot. She says, when I'm on a set, when she visits me on a set, she, and she doesn't like visiting me, coming to, come to the set for this very reason. She said, I'm a different person. 
And I'm like, and I asked, I said, what do you mean I'm a different person? She said, well, like, you're just a totally different person when you're on the set opposed to when you're at home, you know? And uh, so, like, if I'm just, if I'm not in doing anything film related and if there's like a party, I'm like sitting back observing. But if I have to do something film related on set or then I'm more open, you know, I'm more of an uh, extrovert, you know? And, <laughs> but when, again, when I went out with those DVDs, it's, it's overcoming your fear. And a lot of us, and I think that's the key thing is that a lot of us don't want to share our work because they fear what people may say. A lot of us don't want to go door to door because they fear that people will say no. You know, a lot of us don't want to start on that first screenplay because they fear people will not read it or people not, uh, they will not get it made. Or, you know, so their fear is the one, it, suck, it, suck, it just it controls us. So we have to overcome that fear. And so with me is that I had to overcome, it was, the fear was there. It was there, like going, you know, I was timid, you know, especially going, you know, uh, especially when I was doing like the, the pagers and because I've never done that before. So when I did the pagers and when I did the, uh, and going and asking people to buy pages, again, that was just, that was just shopping in my skills for when I had to do the DVD, which was what I was most passionate about. But we have to go get over that fear and just go out and just do it, make it happen. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. So with the film that you went door to door with, uh, that was your first film? That was my first film. Okay. And was that a documentary? No, it was, it was a, it was a narrative. Okay. Yeah. It's called Why Men Cheat? Why, Why Men Cheat, yes. Okay. And of course, that's a catchy t uh, subject. Sure. Yeah. yeah I'm sure. <laughs> sure. Sure. Some people are going to be buying that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, did a distributor pick up the film? That's the only film that I've ever made that I have that I have no I've never got distribution for, at all. And that's that was the one of the ones that you know my first film again, and that's the one of the ones that allowed me to uh, get enough make enough money to make other films, but I never got distribution for that film. That's wow. the only film. This was in 2005? This was in 2005. Okay. Yeah. So you're knocking on people's doors in the Chicago area, selling them a film about infidelity, mm -hmm. and some people are like, yeah, I'll take it, yeah. and other oh, yes. people, no, I don't want to see it, or what, what, what would they say? Well, so, well, because the, this, this, they were like, what, what, is the, what is the film about? A lot of women would say, why do men cheat? So <laughs> then they want a conversation. They, they want a conversation. Yeah. Okay. And that's a key thing too is that people don't don't be so quick to just want to get people's money. Have that and be sincere. Have a genuine conversation with people and talk with people. And when you're just so quick to get their money, they're gonna be like, no, nah, they're not. They don't. They're not gonna want to support you. But if you have a sincere conversation with people and you just listen to people and give them, uh, 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 be honest with people, you can get their support. So when I would go door to door, a lot of women would be like, why do men cheat? Like men be like, man, are you telling our secrets? <laughs> and so, right. and so the women, more women of course, uh, they wanna know why do men cheat? So we, had, we would have that discussion, you know, and, uh, and it would, it would, you know, we have that discussion and then they would buy the, uh, they would buy the DVD. And the more you have that discussion, here's the thing, the more you help, you talk, you have that discussion and you listen to what they're saying and you answer their questions honestly, they're going to, they're going about it because they want to know what this movie is about. Mm -hmm. And they want to know the secrets of the reasons why white men cheat. Did anyone ever ask you to do one from the female perspective? No, I've never been asked to do one. Really? Yeah. Why women cheat? I don't know. Just just to kind of do like you you doing black and privileged uh, volume one, uh -huh. so you could do you know I don't know. <laughs> I th what? Yeah, that would be that would be a great you know I think that would be a great top topic to cover the reason why women cheat. Yeah, even more taboo. Yeah, than, than for men. Because women cheat diff for different reasons, of course. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I'm sure. Well, did you find that there was one reason? For, for, men? for men or was it was it various reasons but it was just a need that wasn't met whether it was sexual or emotional uh, very different reasons why men cheat i mean like uh, i mean just be honest like we really do we really need a reason i don't know <laughs> I, don't. I mean for us for, for me i mean women like more get emotional attached that's why when when again that's why when uh when me and we find out that the woman that we we that we love cheated on us, we'd be devastated. We you know we could be out there cheating all doing every all kind of things, 
But we found out that a woman cheating on us, we're devastated. We're heartbroken. You know, we're so unforgiving. You know, and so I think that would be a great subject to, to tackle as far as uh, why do women cheat? Well, you know, you see it in the media too, and then we'll, we'll move on from this topic. Mm -hmm. But uh, that if, if a man does it, it's it's a little more forgivable. Okay, he's a man, and she threw him, you know, quote threw her herself at him or whatever. But if a woman does it, it's it's wow, like who is she? She's ba she's a bad person, mm -hmm. you know. So it's just interesting how it's perceived, you know, you know, back in the day, you know, these, these indiscretions they would call, yeah. you know, and. But yeah, it's just interesting how it's perceived. Yeah. You know, but anyway, so we'll, we'll move on. Yeah. <laughs> Great subject. Okay, all right, there's, there's your next movie idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So how many of those DVDs did you sell? Okay, so we were selling our DVDs for, we got a, a we got the first, the first run, we did a, a run of like a thousand. We sold those, got another run of like another thousand. So we got a, a total run of like, I think like 5,000. However, we would, we would sell a lot for 10000 I mean, for $10. Sometimes we would do two for 10, or things like that. So we, told, we sold over, over the years, maybe like between, probably close to 10,000 DVDs. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but this is over, uh, over a time, yeah. Were you ever tempted? Because I know uh, to get those DVDs made weren't, probably were not cheap if you got, unless you did like a huge bulk. Uh -huh. It's, I, I still remember the cost. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I would get a thousand made, and it would be like eleven hundred dollars. Oh, okay. Yeah, eleven hundred dollars for a thousand. It was a company called at the, I don't know if they're still in business, but it was Duplium. And uh, what we do, we would go to them. They would print us a thousand copies. They would mail it. We had, had all these big boxes in in in, in, uh, in my room that was just like because uh, I at that particular time um, I lived in 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 the attic. Of my mom's house, oh, okay, <laughs> and um, and so I would get these DVDs, and they would they would ship, it would come to the house, and I would just have all these boxes of DVDs in the attic where I, where I lived, and um, but I would spend like you know a thousand dollars for a thousand copies, like eleven hundred dollars for a thousand copies. Were you ever tempted to buy a huge, like even more, or were you afraid that somehow you wouldn't be able to sell them out, or you just wanted to do it in certain increments? Yeah, I wanted to do them a thousand each. Because I knew, I, uh, but before I actually, here's the thing, before I actually sold the DVDs, I already knew like how to get rid of at least 300. And that is what I was telling you about is I would do events, like I would do a poetry event and where I would sell tickets for $25, where you, know, uh, where you get poetry, you get food and you get a DVD. So I knew that I knew that based off that dollar amount that I was going to at least make my thousand dollars back plus a profit where I can reinvest. And then from there, what I can do is because I wanted to people to get the DVD, I can I can sell a DVD for five dollars, you know, or I can just sell it or somebody say, OK, I don't have the money at this particular time. Can I pay you back? You know, so you have to take that chance, of, you know, give them a DVD. Uh, give them a DVD and some a lot of times like when people uh, Say that you know, they don't have the money they really don't have the money if you give them the, the movie and They'll come back and they may even give you a $20 bill and that happened as well it, The movie was $10 and I would give I was like, you know, don't worry about it You know, just take the DVD and they will come back and they'll give me a $20 $20 So those things you know, so we came you know, we want to because my mission was to get the movie out get the movie out so but I knew I had to make that investment back right so yeah. you knew if I do this only this amount I feel confident that I can get them out yes okay. oh yeah interesting yeah, yeah.